when it comes to binary trees, we all know about the in-order, pre-order and post-order traversal techniques, right? But what happens when you start solving problems? We often forget about them, correct? So let us try to explore a problem on lead code that uses these traversal techniques. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, I will tell you how you can use these traversal techniques to come to an efficient solution. And then we will also see some of the gotchas and caveats that you need to be careful about. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given two binary trees A and B, correct? And you have to determine if the tree B is a subtree of tree A, right? So what does that actually mean? So as you can see in our first test case, this is the first tree, tree A, and this is tree B, right? And you can see that, okay, this tree 4, 1, 2, you can find this entire tree right over here, right? So I can say that this tree B, this is a subtree of the actual tree A. So if this condition is true, you just need to return a true, else you need to return a false. So in this case, true will be your answer. However, you need to be careful about one thing. You can see that in the test case number two, my subtree remains the same, right? 412. But if you check my original tree, this has slightly changed, right? And you may say that, okay, you can find the same tree again over here, right? But in this case, the answer will be false because your tree B, this does not have any child nodes, correct? But in your original tree, this node 2, this has a child node 0, right? So you cannot say that this tree is actually a subtree of tree A. So in this particular test case, you have to return false as your answer. This was one of the primary things that you needed to be careful about. So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Before we start solving this problem, I want to let you know that this solution involves the knowledge of knowing either the in-order or the post-order or the pre-order traversal techniques. So if you're new to them, I would highly, highly recommend you to stop this video right over here and look at those videos first. You can find the link in the description below because based on that, we will try to come up with an efficient solution. So let us take up an example. You are given two trees, right? And you have to determine if this tree B, this is a subtree of your original tree, correct? So just looking at it visually, you can see that yes, okay, you can find the same tree 412 right over here, right? But how do you go about solving this programmatically? How do you write an algorithm for it? So a few things can come to your mind. You know that you have to traverse this entire tree somehow, right? So you're gonna traverse the first tree and then you try to gonna traverse the second tree. So that is how you know that, okay, I can iterate over each of the elements. And once you have got all the elements, then you can start to think that, okay, now I have the elements and I can try to compare that, okay, the same elements are occurring in the same order. And that can tell you that, hey, this tree is a subtree of the original tree. So try to understand what I'm saying. You need to find a way that you can traverse this tree. So you traverse this tree in a certain fashion, right? You will get some sequence of all of these nodes, correct? And then what you're going to do is you will try to traverse this tree also. And then once again, you are going to get a certain sequence, right? So to determine if this tree B, this is a subtree of your original tree, then this sequence, this will lie somewhere over here in the bigger sequence, right? And this is where the tree traversals will come in very, very handy. So for now, what we're going to do is we are going to try to do a pre-order traversal of both these trees. So how does a pre-order traversal actually work? For a pre-order traversal, you traverse the root first, then you traverse the left subtree, and then you traverse the right subtree. Correct? So now let us try to apply the pre-order traversal on our first tree. So starting off with the root. First of all, we get the root element. Then we need to look at the left subtree. Once again, we will apply the pre-order traversal technique over here. 
So we are going to get four. That is the root. Then the left element and then the right element. So now the root is taken care of. The left is taken care of. You are just remaining with the right child, right? So I take this up and I enter it. So this is the pre-ordered traversal of your first tree, correct? Similarly, what you're going to do is you will do a pre-ordered traversal of your tree B as well. So doing a pre-ordered traversal, first of all, we get the root that is four, then the left element and then the right element. So then I get four, one and two. So this is the pre-ordered traversal of your second tree. And this is the pre-ordered traversal of your first tree, right? So now try to see, you can see that this pre-ordered traversal, this particular sequence, you can find the same sequence over here in the full pre-order traversal as well, right? So this tells you that yes, this tree is in fact a subtree of your original tree. So this is a concept that you can try to apply. What you will do is you will first get the pre-order traversal of your first tree and then you are going to get the pre-order traversal of your second tree. And then just try to compare if this shorter string or this sequence, this is a substring of your original bigger sequence. If yes, then you can simply return a true, else you have to return a false. In this case, you can find the sequence existing, so true will be your answer. So for this particular test case, I took the advantage of pre-order traversal. It is up to you. You can either choose the in-order traversal technique or you can also choose the post-order traversal technique. An important thing to notice over here is that the level order traversal technique will not give you a correct answer. Let us try to do a level order traversal technique and see what is the problem. So for the first tree, the level order traversal will give you three, then four, then five, then one, and then two, correct? And for the second tree, you're going to get four and then one and then two, right? So you can see that four, one, two does not exist anywhere in the sequence, right? And then this will tell you that the answer is false. So a level order traversal technique will not give you the correct answer. And that happens simply because a level order traversal technique does not take into account how the nodes are connected. It will just go level by level and try to give you a sequence. Whereas all of the pre-order, post-order and in-order traversal techniques are based on recursion property and they follow the property of a tree throughout. That is the left child, the root and the right node. So just don't use the level order traversal technique. You can use any other traversal technique as you wish. But also then, there are a few gotchas that you need to be careful about before you actually write your solution. So let us have a look at them. So once again, I have these two trees in front of me, right? Tree A and tree B. So if our analogy was correct, we try to apply the pre-order traversal technique on both the trees. And then we are going to just see if the tree B string is a subset of the tree A string, correct? Try to do a pre-ordered traversal of tree A. How does the pre-ordered traversal actually go? You go root, then left, and then right. So I start off with the root and I write down four over here. Then I go to the left. In the left as well, I have a small tree and then I take the root. So I take a one, then I take a left and I get a two. And I don't have anything on the right, all the values are null, right? So I get my pre-order traversal as 412, correct? Now let us look at our tree B. And once again, do the pre-order traversal on it. You will go root, then left, and then right. So once again, what do you get? You get 412, correct? And as you notice, both of these pre-order traversals are same. So if you try to check this sequence in this sequence, this will give you true in fact, correct? But as you can see, this tree, you cannot find this tree in the original tree, correct? So what do you say? Is your technique wrong? No. The caveat that I'm talking about is you also have to include all of the null nodes when you are approaching this problem using this technique. Let me show you what I mean. When you're looking at your tree A, this tree actually have all of these null nodes also, right? And then if you look at the pre-order traversal, we never accounted for all of these null nodes. Now, when you have all of these null nodes in place, how will your pre-order traversal end up looking? Your pre-order traversal will end up looking something like this, correct? Because how do you traverse it? First of all, you go to root, so you get four. Then you look at the left subtree, right? 
in your left subtree again you look at the root so one you get a one and then once again you look at the left in your left you have the small tree so you get a two over here then you get your null node as a left node then you get the right node that is null again then you go back up so you get a null node again and then you go back at the root node so you traverse your right node so with all the null values this will be your complete pre-order traversal so now try to apply the same technique to the second tree as well in your second tree also you will fill out all of your null nodes now once again try to do a pre-order traversal of this complete tree with all the null nodes and when you do it you will get your answer something like this so now do the sequence check try to find out if you can find this sequence in your actual string you cannot find it over here right because this has changed now so this is the only major caveat that you have to be careful about while solving this problem if all of this is now clear to you let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action on the left side of your screen you have the actual code to implement this solution and on the right I have a big tree that is defined by root and I have a smaller tree that is defined by sub root and both of these trees are passed in as an input parameter to the function is subtree. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. So moving on with a dry run. So if you notice in the beginning, I have a helper function. Now this helper function is nothing but it takes in a root node and it will try to do a pre-order traversal of the entire tree. So what it does is it takes in the node to begin with and then does the entire pre-order traversal. It will then return me this entire traversal in form of a string so I can look it at in a form of a sequence. Correct? So now let us move back to our actual method. In this method, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, I convert my first tree in form of a string, right? And then in the next step, I will convert my second tree in form of a string. So once these sequences are formed, I will get, correct? So this is the sequence of the first tree and this is the sequence of the second tree. And these are in the pre-order format, right? So just to determine if the second tree is a subtree of the first one, I just use a contains function that is in the standard string library, right? So you can see 412 does in fact exist in the pre-order sequence of the first tree. This is true and simply this will return your answer. The time complexity of this solution will be order of n, where n is the total number of nodes in your bigger tree. And the space complexity of this solution will also be order of n because you are using recursion and you are using the space to iterate over every node in your bigger tree. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that when it comes to binary trees, I know that level order traversal seems very, very easy and it is usually advantageous than all the other techniques, correct? Because in a level order traversal, you can literally go level by level iteratively and then also visualize what is happening. You can pick every element and then see, okay, these are its trees and that's what I want to do, right? But sometimes, for example, in this problem, you will not be able to achieve this solution using the level order traversal technique. So do not just skip all of the other traversal techniques just because a level order traversal technique did not give you the correct answer. So always just watch out and keep an eye on the other traversal techniques as well. It could be possible that they can give you a better result. For example, a binary search tree, it can give you all the elements in a sorted order using the in order traversal technique. So always just watch out for all of them. So while going through my video, did you face any problems? Or have you found out any other problems that cannot be solved using the level order traversal technique, but can be easily done using any of these separate techniques? Or are there any other special test cases that you found out where these techniques are very handy? Tell me all of these things in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify concepts for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.